in The Will to Live, we begin to see the outlines of the kind of free will we really have. Free isn't quite the right word for it. It would be more accurate to describe it as interpretive will. Organisms do the interpretation. Signs don't cause us to interpret. And interpretation is not deterministic. It's open to varied interpretation. Simplifying, there are three kinds of interpretive will in us humans. First, there's will to live, present in all organisms, unfelt and unconscious basic bodily functions. In animals, will becomes two layered. There's will to live, to which neurons and brains add feelings and what could be called will to learn, a capacity to interpret not just through evolved adaptive traits, but through trial and error learning. With humans, a third level has evolved, will to think, conceptualize, or more specifically, symbolize through language. Language makes our interpretive behavior radically different from that of other organisms. With language, it's like the lights went on or the hallucinogens kicked in. We're dazed by the range of things we can interpret in our self-directed effort. Our interpretable environments expand to include the real and imagined in the distant past and distant future. Your cat's interpretations are not going to be influenced by concepts espoused millennia ago, but your interpretations might. Just think of all of the language-based concepts that can influence how you interpret your circumstances and the way that subtle differences between them can lead you to radically different interpretations. Our interpretive range, expanded through language, makes it hard to tell what we've interpreted and hence gives the impression of total freedom. But that's not an accurate description. You fetch influences from far away. It's more accurate to describe our will as far-fetched making us more visionary and more delusional than any other organism. We humans are living, feeling, and thinking. We have the will to live, will to learn, and will to conceptualize through language. This unruly combination yields wildly non-determinate interpretive will. It's not that we become freer, rather we interpret more broadly. So, a further refinement on what you've really got. You are not some wholly independent singular object, a soul or spirit or consciousness heavy equipment driver that decides what your machine body does. You're a three-way internal negotiation between living, feeling, and conceptualizing, each an influence from many directions on how you interpret your circumstances for your own benefit. In sum, all of us organisms have will to live, functionally fitted behavior, self-directed effort. It's there at the origin of life and it expands through evolution, feeling in animals and then out to us in language, which expands the range of influences that we can interpret. You know, often in philosophy, we get stuck on a false dichotomy born of intuitive categories. Free will versus determinism is a good example. We cycle endlessly over which of these intuitive categories fits without stopping to ask the questions behind the debate. In this case, what is will? How did it start? And how does it really work? When we address those questions, we discover what we've really got and thus get over our false dichotomy. We have neither determinism nor free will, but something else, interpretive will. Visit these videos for a scientific explanation for the emergence of interpretive will at the origins of life, or this video on how having language makes us like chronically hallucinating mammals. And congratulations on your somnipotent, somniscient interpretive will. May your quest for the wisdom to interpret what fits benefit you long into your language imaginable future.